Coming up on Ag Week TV, we sit down with some top leaders in ag and find out their take on the new Trump administration. We'll tell you about efforts to control Palmer amaranth, a destructive weed that's heading north. And we'll get you in shape for grilling season at Barbecue Boot Camp. Welcome to Ag Week TV. I'm Shauna Olson. U.S. taxpayers could see sweeping reform of the nation's tax policy if President Trump and Congress can agree on a plan. The Trump administration recently released initial details of what they describe as one of the largest tax plan overhauls in history. However, the House Ways and Means Committee and the Senate are also working on legislation of their own. Michelle Rook looks at the provisions that will be most beneficial to ag and how these plans will be meshed together in the end. Both Congress and the administration are working on a massive tax reform package. Why will that be so important to agriculture? Because it would mean an easier tax code and lower income tax rates for corporations and individuals. Lower rates, and they um, because that's more money in their pockets that they can reinvest into their operations. Both tax plans also eliminate the estate tax, which helps farmers pass the farm to the next generation. So many families, family farms that I've seen uh, break up. Uh, because of having to sell hard assets in order to pay federal estate tax. Tax reform could also lower the capital gains tax rate and allow depreciation of capital purchases. Uh, expensing immediately of uh, investments and equipment and, and those sorts of things I think is also uh, a, a big positive for agriculture. So the big question is, how will Congress's plan come together with the president's? You know, they're not that far apart. The president has the same principles and ideas in his tax reform. He just goes about it uh, even a step further, goes to much lower rates. However, Washington insiders say a tax overhaul bill may not get done this year. I don't think tax reform is likely to happen anytime very quickly. I think they're still thinking at least they'll try to go back and redo health care and that will take a while. In Washington, D.C., I'm Michelle Rook reporting for Ag Week. Nome says the other problem with the president's plan is it doesn't become revenue neutral within the 10 years required by the Senate budget reconciliation. That means they would not be able to get the 51 votes needed in the Senate for passage. Palmer amaranth is spreading destruction in fields across the southern U.S., and it could be coming soon to a field near you. It's been found in two counties in Minnesota and several places in South Dakota. It hasn't been found in North Dakota yet, but the fear is it's coming. Jonathan Knutson has more about the weed and what you can do to try to keep it out of your fields. Experts say it's America's number one weed enemy, and it's coming to egg weed country. We don't want it spreading into cropland. We don't want it in row crops. Tom Peters is a weed scientist at NDSU and the University of Minnesota. He stresses being aggressive and proactive in dealing with Palmer amaranth. The weed hurts farmers in two ways. It pushes up weed control costs and can ravage crop yields. Some people call it water hemp on steroids. Water hemp grows two inches a day. I think Palmer amaranth grows at least three inches a day. So the sheer size, but how quickly it grows is another characteristic that makes it unique and different from its relatives. Palmer amaranth began in the southwestern U.S. and moved into the southeast. Now it's getting established in the Corn Belt. Experts urge an integrated approach that includes scouting fields often, changing up herbicides, and extending crop rotations if possible. They evolve quicker than we uh, discover new control tactics. Farmers can prevent it from getting established in individual fields. Scouting is going to be the, the most important tool, and just constantly being on the lookout for that unusual-looking pigweed that just doesn't, doesn't look like what we've dealt with in the past. Weed identification, weed eradication, is all about awareness. It's people looking at something and saying, that doesn't look right, and I'm going to ask questions about it. There is no Palmer amaranth in this North Dakota field, but only diligence will keep it that way. For Ag Week, I'm Jonathan Knudsen. 
Peters says if you see something that doesn't look right, report it to your local county agent right away. This week's Crop Stop takes us to Beersburg, South Dakota, where rain is slowing down planting. They're trying to stay ahead of it at the Larson Farm. They farm 1,000 acres of corn and 1,000 acres of beans. The corn is all in, but only about 45 acres of beans were in when Mikkel stopped by. It's been really wet. They've been racing the rain the entire time, um, and it kind of just gets dried up, and you have a couple days to go like heck, and then we get some more rain. Take one day at a time, you know, we got the corn in, and, and now um, we'll just look at getting the beans in, you know. We just need a, a good week of nice dry weather and, and then hit it hard. The wet spot's really wet, and the dry spot's really dry, so, you know, the yields might be affected by that. Um, corn doesn't like it when you put it in mud, and we did in some areas. John Larson says they had a wet start last year too, but still ended up with respectable yields, so he's not concerned yet. Up next on Ag Week TV, we'll ask some national ag experts about how Trump administration policies are playing out for farmers. Introducing the new Challenger 1000 series, tractors unlike any other manufactured by Agco. Redefining what a wheel tractor is capable of when it comes to wheel slip, power to ground, and fuel economy. Today, it's not enough just to be tough, you've got to be smarter than everyone else too. Contact your Challenger dealer today to get in the seat of the new Challenger 1000. Superior engineering, superior performance, superior productivity. The next generation of tractors from your Challenger dealer. The window of opportunity in farming is short. Make sure your Case IH equipment is ready to make the most of it by using only genuine Case IH replacement parts from Titan Machinery. Only original Case IH parts are engineered for maximum life and performance in your equipment. Don't take chances with off-brand parts that may fail when you need your equipment the most. Contact your local Titan Machinery dealership and find out why genuine Case IH parts offer the best value for your farming operation. When you're serious about outdoor cooking, turn to your grilling headquarters, home of economy. We have the latest from Weber and Traeger. Weber offers every option from their history-making charcoal kettles to the latest portable and deck gas models. And Traeger wood pellet grills make grilling and smoking easier than ever. Plus, we have the guaranteed lowest price on all the accessories you'll need to be the grill master of the block. Home of economy, where your dollar buys more. AM 970 WDAY, North Dakota's oldest radio station, has added the Red River Farm Network to its lineup. Join veteran farm broadcaster Mike Hergert and the rest of the Red River Farm Network's team as they partner with AM 970 WDAY and Ag Week to cover the area's number one industry, agriculture. Join us Monday through Friday for Country Morning Today starting at 7 a.m., opening markets at 8.30, and market updates will run at 9.30, 10.30, and 11.30. Closing markets will run at 1.30 p.m. Tune in to AM 970. WDAY. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? AgWeek Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up to date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. AgWeek. Subscribe today by calling 1 800 811 2580. Those in agriculture have been keeping a close eye on the Trump administration. While in D.C. recently, we had the chance to talk to several national leaders in ag and get their take on President Trump's time in the White House so far. We're very pleased to see what's happening at the EPA and that we have finally got someone in there that is much more ag friendly and understands that you know farmers truly are the best stewards of the land and the air and the water and because we feed our own families off of that. Uh, I think in those areas we're pleased. Um, I do believe from the three meetings I've already had at the White House since uh, the Trump administration came in, I, I don't want to put all the words in their mouth, but I really feel comfortable that if we can get them a farm bill, President Trump will sign it. Our biggest hurdle is the trade agenda. 
Chandler Gould is the CEO of the National Wheat Growers Association. He says 50 percent of the wheat grown in the U.S. leaves the country. He says the 2018 Farm Bill will be crucial to help farmers survive natural disasters like the May 1st blizzard that damaged or killed nearly half of the wheat crop in western Kansas this spring. Well, we still want to see a very strong Title I program. We're going to have to work with some of our southern uh, commodities that are in a little different situation and find some money. I think we need a good balanced approach to the conservation title. Uh, there seems to be some swings of where people want to see CRP, but then crop insurance, it can't be touched. We've got to protect it. Brooke Appleton is the Director of Public Policy and Political Strategy for the National Corn Growers Association. I think overall we felt really positively about our ability to work with this new administration, um, their willingness to sit down with us and our farmers and have discussions on very important issues such as trade, um, transportation, uh, regulatory issues at EPA. Um, so we've had great conversations with this administration so far. We just hope to continue to build on those new relationships. Patrick Delaney is the Director of Policy policy communications for the American Soybean Association. Well, I think there's a lot of opportunity there for us. Um, obviously on the regulatory front, I think a lot of our farmers are looking to the, uh, looking to the White House to review a lot of what the, uh, what the Obama administration had put in place in terms of water, uh, water quality regulations, air quality regulations, and take a look at how those regulations may be reformatted or reformulated uh, to allow farmers to be the stewards that we know they are while at the same time safeguarding those air quality and water quality goals. Uh, on the flip side of the coin, I think uh, the trade stance makes us a little bit nervous. More than half of the soybeans grown domestically are exported. And then you couple that with all of the meat that we export, things like pork and chicken, dairy, eggs, all of those demand soybean meal as, uh, as animal feed. And so when you talk about increasing, imp uh, increasing exports, you're not just talking about soybeans and meal and oil, you're talking about those products that we send overseas that really drive demand here at home too. So trade is extraordinarily important for us. Mexico and Canada combined purchase $3 billion in soybeans every year. He says the organization is pleased the Trump administration is not doing away with NAFTA. Cool, rainy weather is still holding up planting for some. When can we expect it to warm up? Your agri-weather forecast is next. And later, we'll take you to boot camp where summer chefs are learning to be better barbecuers. Advanced biofuel for America's diesel engines is clean burning and made from renewable sources like soybean oil. Biodiesel fuel works in any diesel engine, reducing emissions, helping us breathe cleaner air. Biodiesel adds value to North Dakota soybeans creating jobs, improving the environment, increasing our energy independence. Biodiesel, it starts with soybeans, it's fueling America. My name is Carson and I'm a fourth generation corn farmer. The corn that's grown in North Dakota, you could probably trace all over the world. Back growing up, it was always hauled at a local elevator, and now we haul directly to an ethanol plant who processes that corn into a clean burning fuel. The North Dakota ethanol industry uses over 150 million bushels of corn and returns $640 million to the state economy. Every day across America, Excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Martinson Ag Risk Management offers a variety of crop marketing and crop insurance packages to our customers. With over 40 years of experience, our dedicated staff works hard to ensure you get the best advice on crop insurance, marketing, and risk management. Contact Randy or any of the staff at Martinson Ag Risk Management today at 701-205-4200 or visit us online at martinsonag.com. The Stockyards Ag Experience tells the story of agriculture beginning with the Sioux Falls Stockyards. You'll learn about how agriculture impacts our region and the world, and the science and culture that make it all possible. 
The Stockyards Ag Experience Barn features interactive exhibits in a renovated 1880s barn at Falls Park in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. The Stockyards Ag Experience showcases agriculture's story from the farm to your table. For more information, call 332-1917 or visit us online at stockyardsagexperience.org. Weather portion of Ag Week now, a different sort of map to start out tonight. This uh, map comes to us uh, with, with, with an interesting perspective of the number of tornado warnings issued by National Weather Service office. And the scale over here, you can see that it's the brown and the pink and the red shades that have issued the most tornado warnings. And they're, as you would expect, down here in the southern plains, the deep south, up into some parts of the lower Midwest. Over northwest Minnesota, all of North Dakota and almost all of South Dakota, no tornado warnings, none for the Rockies. And I would point out something not a lot of people are aware of, that Central California does get occasional tornado warnings. The tornado season out there is actually like December through March, so it's ended by now. But this is kind of interesting, especially when you consider the fact that the area of the most tornado, watch, or tornado warnings issued is actually having some drought. So how does that work? How do you have that kind of storm activity without there being that much rainfall? And the answer to that question is that it turns out that those two things are not necessarily the same thing. You often get severe weather without there being a lot of widespread rain. Notice also that up across the northern plains, there are some areas that are slightly dry, but nothing too extreme around just yet. So what is the weather going to be doing to help us out as we move into this week? Well, first of all, the main branch of the jet stream finally delivering a ridge of high pressure, but it's over the Rockies. So the wet weather that's been around the Great Lakes will gradually, very gradually shift east. Most of the Rockies will remain quite completely dry for this week anyway, with virtually no rain at all into the northern plains, northern Rockies, and in fact, not a lot of stormy weather across the country, except down south where this bulge in the jet stream will likely set off a few storms. Cool temperatures this week in northern plains will gradually retreat back into the Hudson Bay and Great Lakes area, and typically warm to hot weather across the deep south and throughout the west, but nothing really completely widespread. There will be a little surge of hot weather into the interior sections of the west toward the end of the week, but I think that will be fairly short-lived. And as the ridge finally builds, warm weather will finally spread out into the northern plains about the time we start looking at the start of June. For June 4 to 10th, the second week, the dry weather will gradually give way to at least a chance of some storms. And I think the stormy weathers will build in across the lower part of the Middle West as well. But most of this to the northern plains, I think, will be fairly fleeting. And the warm weather will actually fairly retreat as well. Maybe a few warm days, but I don't think it will really linger that way. So as we move into into the start of the month of June, across the northern plains, we're still dealing mostly with showers, not storms. Maybe one round of storms the second week. Other things we're talking about, cool weather continues through the end of May, no real heat. So overall, we are still slightly dry as summer starts. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? Ag Week Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. AgWeek. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. Premier Shortline USA is your dealer for Meridian Storage and Grain Handling. Fifty years ago, Meridian Manufacturing designed the first smooth wall hopper bin. This innovation set the standard for hopper bins across North America, completely self-cleaning with no obstructions. Smooth wall hopper bins have become the preferred choice for safe and efficient storage. For temporary grain storage to complete systems, contact Nate or Brent at Premier Shortline USA. Located in the heart of the Red River Valley, Bloomfield Enterprises sells the finest trailers and farm equipment in the business. Family owned and operated since 1997, Bloomfield Enterprises is your place for BBI spreaders and accessories. We pride ourselves on carrying a wide variety of inventory for our customers to choose from. With a full service shop and repair center, we are committed to taking care of our customers before and after the sale. Whether you're in the market for a new trailer or quality farm equipment, we have just what you're looking for. Call us today or visit us online at bloomfieldenterprises.com. 
Tom. This is Dennis Belisky reminding you we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. Warmer weather means it's barbecue season, but there's a lot more to a good meal than just throwing some steaks on the grill. NDSU's Meat Science Department is serving up a heaping helping of information and tips for a better cookout. Michael Pates attended the first barbecue boot camp of the year. Welcome to the Beef Cattle Research Center. We encourage interaction at the barbecue boot camp. It's a time of the year we love to move the kitchen outside but getting the meat just right can be tricky. A meat thermometer, that's the number one mistake, not having one. This is NDSU's first barbecue boot camp of the season. A summer tradition that can make anyone a pro at the grill. Do you flip it halfway through? Do you put it on one side and leave it? The event is divided into stations where campers learn about the spices, marinades, and rubs. This is the papaya marinade right here. Nutrition and the difference between grilling and barbecuing. Out of everything that we cook, brisket is by far my favorite. Also the proper degree of doneness. We cook them a nice medium rare pork chop at 145 degrees and we force them to eat it. <laughs> so that, because there's a lot of misconceptions that people can't eat a medium rare pork chop. And background on handling live animals. Why would we be cautious about ruining anything back here, right? This is what you'll find in your crock pot on a Sunday afternoon. Eric Berg is a professor of meat science at NDSU and is a co-director of the barbecue boot camps. Budget cuts have meant a leaner boot camp schedule, but Berg says public education is a big part of their mission. If we were to put on a program, come learn about agriculture, we probably wouldn't get that many people. So if we bring people in to eat some great food, to learn some cooking techniques, talk about food safety, while they're here, we tell them what we do and we give them the opportunity to ask us. Have you done studies on that too? The experts, how they're how their food is produced. From the science side of things, about how the product is created, but then also how to shop, and then also how to prepare it. So threefold for sure. Pigs have the same digestive system that we do. We've actually done a study where we fed pigs what the average human eats. And those pigs had less muscle, they had a fatty liver, they had acne and their hair fell out. (laughs) This is Gail Bollinger's second trip to barbecue boot camp. The last time I attended, it was I remembered it being really good in not just knowing how to cook the different cuts of meat, but how to pick out the right meats in the grocery store. It was really good. So I thought, I'm going to come back when I saw it advertised again. At NDSU, this is Michael Pates for Ag Week. The event costs $30, which includes a meal and a meat thermometer to take home. Just Google Barbecue Boot Camp for more information. You can learn about farming at the Red River Zoo with help from Ag Week TV. We'll show you after this. AM 970 WDAY, North Dakota's oldest radio station, has added the Red River Farm Network to its lineup. Join veteran farm broadcaster Mike Hergert and the rest of the Red River Farm Network's team as they partner with AM 970 WDAY and Ag Week to cover the area's number one industry, agriculture. Join us Monday through Friday for Country Morning Today starting at 7 a.m., opening markets at 8.30, and market updates will run at 9.30, 10.30, and 11.30. Closing markets will run at 1.30 p.m. Tune in to AM 970 WDAY. We taught him how to hit a baseball. How to hit a receiver. The strike zone. The net. You taught him how to hit the upper corner. You even taught him how to hit the open man. 
how much time have you spent teaching him what not to hit? Advanced Grain Handling is your regional dealer for grain handler dryers, bins, and accessories. With Grain Handler's continuous mix flow drying systems, you're capable of high levels of grain dryer efficiency on all types of grain, including seed grain. Advanced Grain Handling also carries Batco Belt Conveyors Field Loaders, which minimize damage and help protect grade quality and germination performance of seed. Advanced Grain Handling has licensed and trained service techs and a licensed electrical shop. Contact Chad today. I'm Jenny Garth, and as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. This is unacceptable, and something Feeding America is working to solve. Through a nationwide network of food banks, Feeding America serves virtually every community in the United States, including yours. See how you can help your community. Visit feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Adventure awaits at the Farmers Union Camp, presented by the North Dakota Farmers Union. Farmers Union Camp is the perfect place for young campers to develop cooperation, teamwork, and leadership skills. Campers will enjoy theme nights, skits, games, talent shows, and more. Camps are held at Wesley Acres and Hart Butte in June, July, and August. Register by May 15th to get $25 off your camp fee. For camp dates and more information, visit us at ndfu.org or call 800-366-8331. Next time you head to the Red River Zoo, you'll want to check out the new and improved Children's Zoo Farm exhibit. One of the highlights includes a special edition of Ag Week TV for kids. It will be airing inside the barn. It's an episode designed to help educate children about agriculture and life on the farm. Spring is a busy time of year for farmers with planting and calving season at the same time. We just finished calving. And pretty soon we'll be turning all the animals out to the pastures so that they can graze for the summer. We had four sets of twins and that means the, the mama cow had two calves and so we take one of the calves off because they usually can't raise both. And so the boys now have bottle calves to feed um, because of that. There will be a special Ag Adventure Day at the Red River Zoo on July 22nd. There will be educational activities for children to learn about agriculture, performances by Penny and Pals, tractors for kids to sit in, as well as a barbecue lunch. This week we have two great photos. The first comes from Lenny from Esteline, South Dakota. He says his five-year-old grandson Lincoln loves to be part of planting season. Here he is helping out on the farm. He just graduated from preschool and says he wants to be a farmer when he grows up. Our next picture comes from Keith Johnson from Johnson Stock Farm near Sharon, North Dakota. This is a shot of his grandson holding the smallest calf that has ever survived on their ranch. The calf only weighs 27 pounds and is still healthy two weeks after birth. If you want to see your egg photos on AgWeek TV, email it along with a description to photos at agweek.com. Thanks for watching this week's edition of AgWeek TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com. We'll see you next week.